Guys, welcome back to the garage. Uh, just working on the uh, rear uh, landing gear retract system. section at the moment and what I'm making are these uh, plates here that are actually going to seal off uh, to the outside so when it'll it'll make more sense once, once you see them in place but they're going to be in there like that and there's actually going to be another plate on an angle all the way down to the outside so when the legs in here pivoting that uh, angle section is actually going to clear the leg but what that's going to do is sealed all the way up to pass the bearing and then uh, there'll be a rubber boot of some sort on the top just to seal any air from coming in uh, so that's what I'm working on at the moment and uh, you can see I've got the frame some of the frame in at the moment and uh, these these tubes here square chromoly tubes they're for reinforcement uh, so I'll have rivets like a drill down here it'll be laminated to this box section or C channel I should say and uh, it will uh, give it massive amounts of strength. It'll also be tied in to the tail front and back on the same pivot point as the wheel of the landing gear. And um, it will tie that whole section into the boat hull. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. I've got a few brackets here on the sides and uh, yeah it's going pretty well nice and easy I like working on uh, easy bits with uh, aluminium that makes the day go uh, so pretty well. now I also I don't know if I've uh, mentioned this before but anywhere where you've got a cut and you're actually cutting a square out like a notch so I've got to cut that out to clear that uh, top longer on of the rear section. Uh, you need to drill a hole right in that corner. And the reason for that is this aluminium is such high tensile aluminium that you can score this and snap it. So if you imagine you cut down into this line and when you finish at the end, I've actually done one here for you so you can have a look and see. I'll, I'll have to drill this one out after, but I'll show you how to fix it. So when you finish your, your cut, that's what actually happens. And you get microscopic cracks at the end of your cuts. Some you can see, some you can't see. And what will happen there is over time with vibration, that crack will keep getting bigger and bigger and uh, can end up going straight through your actual sheet all the way eventually if it keeps going. So if you do that and you see it, easy fix for that is just to drill a hole at the end so that uh, you've got a radius on that edge and you actually get rid of those microscopic cracks um, best practice is to actually do it first. So I'll show you with this one. Okay, so hole in the center, nice and easy. Um, it's, you actually line up that radius, the outside of the drill radius to the outside of where you want to cut. 
and then you just go straight up and cut along that edge. I've got two lines there, but I'm following the uh, fine line. And then uh, you can cut this edge straight off. You end up with a bit of a radius in there. You'll never get a crack going out through this way or that way anyway, and um, makes it secure for future. Now, to fix this one, uh, fix this one, all you gotta do is just drill uh, at the end of that there. So we'll do that and fix this one up. Okay, so that's it there. All I've done is drill that out so there's no more cracks in it. Um, and that's acceptable. Um, and that's actual proper practice. If you ever see a crack anywhere, um, you can actually drill at the end of the crack. And it, what it does is it stops that crack going any further then you can reinforce it with, uh, let's say, a doubler plate or something like that. So, nice okay, and easy. So, another quick tip. Um, if you've got a plate that you need to uh, drill a hole through, through something else, your drill doesn't, doesn't fit because of the angle. Um, I do have an angle 90 degree drill uh, chuck that I could actually use and put in here, but for this, for the purpose of this, just nice and easy. Um, just pull the drill out and uh, just line it up in the hole just by hand and actually twist it, which actually then just transfers a mark to the top and bottom uh, with the plate clamped. And as you can see, when uh, you pull it out, there's tiny little marks where you've actually just done by hand the start of the drill hole. So now I can drill that with a, a small bit first as a pilot hole and then drill the hole. Should slide back in, line up perfectly. So another quick little tip. All right, so these uh, holes here, uh, these rivets, they're just cheap off the shelf rivets. Um, just reason for that is there's no real load on them apart from uh, holding these holding these in place um, the other thing is if for example my gear does jam here at this top point I actually want these rivets to break um, so they're only very lightweight aluminium rivets uh, with very low shear force um, purely because I can't see it happening, but if for any any reason the gear jams in between here, um, it will actually break these rivets and just keep allow the gear to move up still. So that's the reason for the real soft rivets. Um, really just a holding plate. So essentially what I've actually done is engineered in a fail safe uh, with these rivets so that uh, if it does, which it never will, but if it does actually jam up, uh, it'll actually just uh, shear those rivets because they're actually only going through a little bit as well. So just on that edge um, and they will uh, snap off if anything ever happens. So, um, and allow the gear to still go up. So the best part about this as well is if this gear actually does uh, fail, so say for example it fails to come down uh, while in flight, uh, you can land it on the belly. So it'll be able to land because of the really strong keel that I've got in through there and the, the structure I've got underneath, you'll actually be able to land it um, on its uh, hull on say grass or something like that. Probably grass so you don't scratch it all up um, and you wouldn't do any real damage to it. Just uh, So another bit of a fail safe uh, for this design aircraft, so. Well, deburring finished. Um, it's probably my least favorite job um, of building is uh, the reason for it is um, you see a creation, you've built it all, 
it all looks good. Then you gotta pull it all apart. Deburr every single hole, um, front and back, uh, because when you when you have the mating surface, you want to make sure there's no gap in between uh, with rivets as well. If you put a rivet in and there's a uh, swarf or burrs behind it, um, those burrs can work their way out and actually um, loosen the rivet and then the rivet comes and starts vibrating around and can also scratch the inner surface as well. So this here is just landing gear mechanism. Um, but it doesn't end there. I now need to clean them all down with a um, cleaner, like a acetone or something. I usually use an acetone wipe just to wipe off all the uh, um, texture marks um, before I prime them. So I'll prime all these, which is why I use these. Um, trust the tables, they're really good just to chuck stuff down. But yeah, it doesn't end there. This is all the mechanism for the landing gear, the rear landing gear. But wait, there's more. And that's all the bits and pieces. So we'll be ready to put all together. I've got to remember. I've got to try and remember how to put it all together. Nah, I should be right. But uh, yeah, that's it. I'll clean them up, prime them, and. Uh, put it all back together, put it back into the hole. All right, one down, uh, one to go. So this is the uh, section, the landing gear support section that I've just made here. So that's gonna go and attach into the fuselage or boat hull. And these pivot points here are where the uh, landing gear pivot from. So yeah, as you can see, here's the bearing points for the gear legs. And there's another bearing point down here, which is for the uh, mechanism, the re retract mechanism. I've got, uh, I've already attached the outer angle which you'll see once I go in there once I mount it in and you can see here chromoly tubing in the support which stiffens up that whole structure support structure there and uh, I've got a cross brace front and back as well which also um, stops any side flex as well so We'll uh, do the other one and uh, start putting right. it So, this is where I got to uh, today. I've got the uh, setup, the re retract setup framework in. So, you can see there I've got cross bracing. These bolts are all just temporary bolts at the moment. I'm waiting on some bolts from aircraft spruce. But you can see it bracketed through here. This bracket ties right down in through there. And uh, this is where the pivot, the pivot point is for the gear, the main gear coming down. So you can also see these brackets in here. So that, I've got to put a flat piece in there and what that essentially will do is seal off that whole uh, section all the way up to the pivot point. So roughly just under here. So uh, the water, water level would have to be up about here for it to actually go in. Uh, so it's all coming together, it's working out pretty well. Got a rivet through here, seal underneath. This is the, the back section of it. Okay, so I've got a reinforcing plate uh, down through here. I don't know if you can see, yeah, they, there's one on the inside, one on the outside. There's a plate coming down through 
the top there so that will be completely sealed off sealed all of that uh, so the water level line would be actually up here um, even though the level line is going to be down a lot lower um, it's just it allows the gear to come up and down um, and also seal off the area all right guys so got the uh, fox out section finished on this here so as you can see this here there's a lip here that overlaps slightly as a drip lip uh, that's all sealed everything's been sealed with uh, polyurethane sealant before putting together so put it on put it together and then clean up the uh, excess so it's completely watertight and as you can see that um, slot there goes all the way all the way up to the bearings for this leg so we'll put the um, we put the legs in and get all the mechanism sorted okay, so got the uh, retract mechanism on so you can see it's uh, an over center uh, mechanism and uh, I'm definitely going an actuator I was talking to a mate of mine and um, it's just the amount of um, additional work I'd have to do to run push rods to uh, actually work both front and rear retract it um, it'd be so much easier just running a electric actuator so that's what I'm doing I'm running one on the back one on the front so this is how this mechanism works so you can see here this full structure it's all tied in it's tied into the, the bottom of the hull as well so it's bolted to the bottom of the hull and bolted down here as well so these these bolts are only uh, temporary until I get the right ones but I just want to get it on wheels so I can weigh it so this cross bracing here stops any side forces that uh, say if you land on one wheel um, these bolts go all the way through so this is the actual leg hinge point it's got the uh, aluminium uh, spacer bearings there the bolt goes all the way through the bolt goes all the way through these here so the way the over center actually works it'll be pulling from this point here just in here be pulling and pulling down but for over center to lock it in over center it'll be basically there which will be locked in that way when you push up on the gear the gear won't actually go down because this point here is over center that point there is over center so one pivot one pulling point I should say um, on here will pull both gear up simultaneously so that's uh, that's how it's all gonna work I've got got them down in there um, all covered it's all boxed in in there now so no water um, can get inside the actual hull and uh, this here, <clears throat> don't know if I mentioned earlier, these are chromoly tubes, chromoly ch steel tubes, front and back, top and bottom, laminated to the uh, C channel. And then you've got these which tie all the way down through, through the chromoly, through top and bottom, and into the boat hull, both sides. So super strong and I've also got two brackets that will be going in here to tie into the top long rong both sides and then 
the uh, the side sheet uh, will actually come down so this side side sheet will come down overlap the bottom one and tie the whole lot in uh, so the cabin frame will be tied down in cabin frame here is all bolted and riveted through there it'll also have the uh, chromoly angle here it'll be a, a gusset plate that side gusset plate this side uh, with some bolts holding it in so it's never going to come away from the actual uh, hull section so I'll just show you how this mechanism works so it'll be pulling from this point in here and it will start to pull both of the gear up so I can't get to it like that but I can lift if I lift one gear leg they both go up and both go down and then over center is locked in that position there now when when I lift this leg you, you may see the uh, other side doesn't go up quite as far and that is purely just um, a bit of slack in the mechanism that if I then pull down if I then pull down on this one if I can get in there it actually um, pulls it to the final the final bit so when the actuator's on there it'll be exactly uh, the same it's just a little bit of slack in the actual mechanism because it's loose to the bolt bolts aren't tight I've just uh, nipped them up by a finger tight at the moment but um, you can see there there's a little bit of play in that mechanism there but once I tighten it all up and the actuators uh, mounted over here and pulling down um, it should work perfectly so that's uh, that's it nice and simple trying to keep it as simple as possible but uh, structurally very solid so that's it there I'll get the um, wheels get the wheels on the gear these here uh, these legs still need to line up properly um, but like I said it's all loose at the moment I just uh, I've just pushed bolts through and everything at the moment so and they're not the right size bolts but what I'm actually gonna have here is to stop so the main forces when you're on the brakes or going down a rough run runway is uh, firstly up forces so you're gonna get that that mechanism takes care of that the there's also side forces here uh, on this leg quite substantial because if you think the lever action from out here is quite a fair bit so what I'm gonna have is in here and I think I've got some over here that's why I built this structure in through here so solid because uh, this is actually going to have slide pads now obviously it's not the right not the right size ones but just to give you the idea so it'll have slide pads both sides so as it goes up and down it will slide on that but in the down position it's locked in for going forward and back uh, with these slide pads so that's basically then what I've got is I've pretty much halved the uh, lever forces that are gonna be up on here um, so it pretty much gets rid of most of those, that lever action 
um, and supports the whole lot a lot better. Yeah, because that's where it would normally try to well be normally trying to pivot from here um, when you're on the brakes. But now it's going to be pivoting and pushing against the framework that I've built down here um, with that nylon pads uh, in place just so it moves up and down. So that's why I've gone such heavy gussets through here to hold the whole uh, gear frame in place. So that's um, the other side over there. So basically be doing both sides and when the gear's locked down, it'll be locked in place. It won't have any way of going forward or back. Um, back's probably gonna be the main uh, way it's gonna go. But, and then also I'm actually, uh, even if this uh, water splashes up into here, it'll all just run straight back out again. So once again, easy for washing it down. I just hose it down inside there, it'll wash it all out. These will be greased up um, and it'll be sealed up so that I can't get any more water through there. So that's, that's pretty much the principle of how it's gonna work. We'll get the wheels on it, um, get it on the floor. Uh, put, I've got a bolt to do on the front bolt on that front um, gear there. I'm just gonna put that in and uh, we should be good to get it down onto the ground and put some scales under it. I'm pretty eager to see what it weighs uh, in it, whether it's close to my estimated weights. Um, I'm thinking it is, but I wanna confirm it on the scales. Then I can work out where this engine's gonna sit up here, how far back or forward. Um, and also how far forward or back the pilot sits. And then um, that'll then determine how much um, either luggage or back seats space that I've got in here. So as you can see, it's quite a big, quite a big space, quite a big hull area. So there should be plenty of room. So let's get these wheels on. Wheels are on. Um, click us all over the floor. The little guy's been having a ball. And I've got just this bolt to do. And then uh, we'll get it on wheels. Okay, so here's another little trick if you want to drill a hole, but you need to make sure that it is absolutely square. Um, you get a a piece of uh, something that's thick. It can be solid, solid probably better, but I'm just using this C channel. And you drill the hole size you want in the actual drill press. That'll give you the exact square hole. And then you clamp it to the part you want to drill through. Make sure that it is in fact sitting square. And then uh, just line up the drill. And just drill, line up your drill through there. That'll keep it exactly square where you want it. And uh, just drill straight through. So yeah, just a just another little trick. Um, if you want to drill square holes, holes that are dead square with the the part, that's um, an easy way. To do it. All right, guys. So got it on wheels. You can see there sitting on wheels. Uh, it's really uh, solid as well. So if I, what I've got in here, I've just put a block in here as well, as well as the uh, uh, bolt pin, just to hold it, make sure that it doesn't uh, drop on me, because I don't have an actuator on there yet. But um, you can actually see if I push on the side, there's no side movements whatsoever.
This is so easy to push around as well with this caster and nose wheel. It just makes it so easy to actually push it around. I'll just set up the camera and I'll uh, see if I can get some footage of it. These are the numbers that I've got. Um, front wheel <coughs> is 33.65 kilos. Passenger rear wheel is 46.9 kilos. And pilot wheel is 47.5 kilos. Now I did expect it to be a little heavier on the pilot side purely because uh, my retract mechanism on the rear is actually to one side, which makes sense why it's heavier that side. So we'll go around and check what they are in pounds. The pilot rear. 104.72 pounds. Passenger rear is 103.54 pounds. Nose wheel is 74.14 pounds. So now I can do the calculations to work out empty with no engine where the center of gravity is actually sitting on this. Um, then I can mathematically put weights in around the aeroplane and uh, work out where that center of gravity is going to sit. So for example, I can now work out exactly where this engine needs to sit here. I can also work out exactly um, where the pilot passenger sits, rear seats if I want to put rear seats in. Um, where I can load it, where I can load the baggage. Um, as you can see, it's huge amounts of storage in this hull. So it's gonna be plenty of room. Um, and also where the tail is gonna go, where I'm gonna load it uh, as far out um, here. So. We'll do some calcs and work it out. And go on right, from there. So that comes up to uh, 128 kilos or uh, 283 pounds. So pretty, uh, pretty happy with that actually, because if you think that's all wheels, tires, gear, I mean, there's nothing in here. It's empty, but no engine. But if you add, so you add, um, say, 100 kilos for an engine um, and, say, another 100 kilos as a, as, as a guesstimate of uh, bits and pieces, some seats, controls. Um, you're still only at 350 kilos for an empty weight uh, of an aeroplane with 200 horsepower. So... This thing should uh, should go well. So obviously it can uh, it can fly on a hundred, but uh, but yeah, this one I'm gonna I'm probably gonna put two hundred horsepower in this. Uh, I'll do a turbo Subaru. Um, so yeah, it should so, go really well. Or seven hundred and seventy pounds empty. So uh, pretty lightweight for uh, for what it is. It's a float plane, remember. Um, so you got the boat hull. Uh, my targeted empty weight was 450. So I'm, I've got 100 kilos still to play with on top of my guesstimate. So 
I think we'll, uh, we may come under that uh, targeted weight. So uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty happy with that. Okay, so I ran a heap of numbers uh, on this CFG just to see uh, what I could load. I, I loaded more uh, up front, multiple pilots or pilot passenger, um, real heavy, real light. Uh, back seats I've loaded really heavy, really light. I put in 100 kilos in the back here. Um, I even put another 100 kilos at the back here. Um, and uh, I'm pretty much, I'm happy with where everything is going to go. So the pilot, pilot uh, passenger row, seat row is going to be here. So that there is perfect. That there is uh, spot on. Obviously I'm sitting in the middle, but this is the height I'll be sitting at. A little bit higher actually, um, but, and passenger on either side. Uh, plenty of headroom still, heaps of headroom. Um, still room in the back. We will not need a um, prop extension at all. Uh, the centre of gravity of the engine is going to be here, which is 890 from my datum, and uh, that's actually going to put the prop pretty much right there with the gearbox on which is perfect absolutely perfect i can put a 74 inch prop on there with massive amounts of clearance still down here so i can get a really big prop on it and uh yeah it should be should be sweet so uh it's it's really coming together now i've got where i'm putting things uh, I know it's going to work with the uh, the weights, so um, just keep at it. So as I mentioned before, it's free to subscribe. So if you could please hit that like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and uh, follow along on the build, we will be doing build updates regularly. So um, we'll catch you on the next one.